Hello and welcome to Crosstalk. I'm Peter Lavelle. Norman Finkelstein, a strong critic of Israel and American foreign policy in the Middle East, is again in the news. A documentary on his life titled American Radical has recently premiered, and is, he has a new book out. This time, we went too far. Truth in Consequences of the Gaza Invasion. And, as ever, controversy surrounds him. So, surprise, surprise, a program on Norman Finkelstein. We have Norman Finkelstein. Norman, thanks for being with us again. We also have Dr. Renan Gessen in Tel Aviv. He's a political analyst and former advisor to Ariel Sharon. And I also thank you for being with us on the program. And another member of our Crosstalk team, Elena Hanga. All right, gentlemen, Crosstalk rules in effect. Um, Norman, you're in the news again. There's a documentary about you, and you have a new book out. Have you seen the documentary about yourself, American Radical? No, I've not seen it yet, but people tell me it's an accurate depiction of me, well, I've for better or for worse. For better or worse, I have also seen it. I want to go to your book a little bit later. If I go to Dr. Gesson, do you have any intention of seeing this documentary on Norman? Well, yes, if, uh, I haven't had a chance to see it, but uh, I would see it uh, uh, just to get more informed about uh, Mr. Dr. Finkelstein. Yeah? So you, how would you describe Dr. Finkelstein? I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of him. And his work, his past books, many of them, very strong critic of Israel. Is that why you would see the, book, see the, the film? No, no, I, I'm, I'm telling you, you know, one of the reasons that we survived through so many decades and centuries is because we had diversity of thought. I'm very tolerant to diversity of thought uh, in, in, I would say, in Jewish thinking, in Israeli thinking, except when uh, you cross certain red lines which uh, put at jeopardy the very existence of your own people. Okay, Norman, what do you think those red lines are? Well, I'm not sure if it's true to say that Israel at least tolerates much diversity of thought nowadays. As we speak, there is a witch hunt going on in Israel against those who dissented from Israel's massacre in Gaza during December and January of this past year. And if you look at, for example, the recent findings of Freedom House, it's now demoted Israel to only a partly free society in terms of freedom of speech and Israel according to reporters without borders now ranks only number 93 among the world's 180 nations in terms of freedom of speech and in fact I, I think many of your listeners will be surprised to learn that in the Middle East Lebanon the United Arab Emirates and Kuwait are now ranked higher in terms of freedom of speech than Israel. Okay, Dr. Gesson, I mean, the, you know, Freedom House is considered by most people kind of a right-wing operation. I mean, they tend to support people like Israel. How do you respond to that? No, there are a lot of organizations which have a different axe to grind. I mean, the test is the test of result. You come to Israel, you visit Israel, you see the number of political parties, you see Arabs who have freedom of speech more than they have in their own respective country. Come on, all these, these uh, mumbo-jumbo coming from the 60s, you know, all this, do not apply to Israel today. You know what? I will tell you something about Israel. Israel is not a normal state. You know what Israel is? They declare that this year will be the year of the endangered species. Among the human race, Israel is an endangered species, and therefore Israel is a national park. It's a national park for endangered species, and therefore the, it acts according to the threats that it receives. That's all. But inside the national park, inside the borders of Israel, you come and visit. You see well, the kind of freedom of speech we have. We, you see even the war the so-called massacre that he calls in Gaza, which wasn't a massacre, this was a purely the act of self-defense according to Article 51. Other countries are not brought to court for that. Israel was for various reasons, which I don't want to go into it right now. But we have a right to survive. We have a right to defend ourselves. We wouldn't have been here ha at this stage, you know, after 61 years of a state, if we weren't capable of defending ourselves and defending our values when we defend ourselves. Norman, would you like to reply to that? Endangered species. Every, every, well, I'll agree with one thing Mr. Grissom had to say. I think we can all agree that Israel is not a normal state, but I'm not sure if that's something you would want to take pride in. 
The fact of the matter is that each day when you open the newspapers, Israel is, is gearing up for a war against another country, another innocent, often defenseless people. The, this past week they talked about a second attack or Operation Cast led to against Gaza. Then they talk about attacking Lebanon. Then they talk about attacking Iran. I think it is correct to say that in the modern world, in the contemporary world, there is really no state quite like Israel. Israel is off the cliff. It's become a lunatic state. Dr. Gessen, Norman Finkelstein has been banned from Israel for 10 years. Do you think, <laughs> it, I'd like to, you know, this, oh, this program is about Norman, so I'd like to ask a few questions about him. He's been banned for Israel for 10 years. Yeah. What, do you think that's fair? <laughs> is he a security well, listen, threat I, to Israel? I, no, 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 no I, I'm listening. No, no I, I'm listening to him, and you know, I hear the words coming out like they're coming out of their hate websites that are sponsored by Iran today. You know, there are about 7,000 of them. It's the same thing. It's the same type of propaganda. I mean, that has nothing to do with reality. I mean, it, he say that we live, we're not a normal state, not because we don't want to be a normal state. We're a normal people living no, in an abnormal that. region. Wait, no, you That's said what it that. is. It's not an hospitable region. When my, when my, when my great said, parents okay, came from Russia here. in 150 years ago, they came, because, they came because there was a Bible in one hand. My great grandfather from Dnieper Petrovsk came with a Bible in one hand and a rifle in another. And his hand was extended to the Arabs who lived here. Some did make business with him, others who fought him had to meet the wrath of his rifle. And that's how you live in the Middle East. You, we are a people who want to survive. We succeeded in surviving because we were able to defend ourselves, to stand up throughout the centuries. Go, go ahead, Without Norman. that, we wouldn't right, have been right. there. That's why we right, are an right. endangered species. All right, let's go to Norman here. Go ahead. It is an oddity that you say you're coming and you want to live in peace with somebody. You come with a rifle in your hand. I often have friends visit me at my home, and when they come to my home, they don't come so with a rifle. So did the first settlers in the United States so you have of to America. Ask yourself an obvious question. So did the first settlers. Dr. Dr. Gessen, Dr. Gessen, correct. Please, please I, let I, get Dr. Gessen. Please let Norman I, I, finish I, I, his point. I, 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 Go ahead, Norman. Finish your point, please. Uh, I, appre I, I appreciate Dr. Gessen's comparison because I think it's exactly right. The first Euro-Americans who came to North America came with a rifle in hand because they came with the intention of displacing and dispossessing the indigenous population. That's why they needed a rifle. No. And most Americans nowadays at least acknowledge the fact that what was done to the indigenous population of North America was wrong. And it's exactly for the same reason that Israel, or I should say, Jews from Eastern Europe had to come to Israel or Palestine with a rifle in hand because their intention was not to live with the indigenous population but to displace and dispossess it in order to create a Jewish state in an area which was overwhelmingly Arab. And uh, I think pretty much everything that ensued after that followed from that basic fact. Uh, nowadays, I would say there's po there, are pro there are possibilities. There are possibilities for Israel to live at peace with what was or what remains of the indigenous population. But unfortunately, Israel is unwilling to resolve the conflict Sorry. along the lines of international law, which would allow for some sort of coexistence between no, Israel, Israel <laughs> and the population that was displaced and dispossessed. Okay, okay, let's go back to Tel Aviv. Does Israel want to have peace with its neighbors, and can the Palestinians you know, have their own state as well? Yeah, you know. I mean, consistently, the United States and Israel yes, are the only can, two countries in the world. They can. They're but the not. only two countries in the world that block this consistently, consistently at the United Nations. So, does Israel want no, to but, have but, peace? But, but, Go but ahead, Doctor Gessen. But Go Dr. ahead. Doctor Finkelstein. No, yeah, yeah but. The Dr. Finkelstein's formula is, a, is an insured formula for committing suicide, not for living in the Middle East. You have to live with the realities in the Middle East. I would like the Middle East to be like North America. I would like to be, the Middle East to be after 400 years of bloody wars like Europe, but it's not. It's still a young region. It's, it's fraught with conflict. The Arab-Israeli conflict is not the only one. There are more conflicts than states in the Middle East. There are 22 states with one Israel, and there are over 30 ongoing conflicts in the Middle East. Let's face it. 
the, 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 the biggest, the largest conflicts here are between Shiite and, Shiite and Sunnis, not between Israel and, and, and its Arab neighbors. And Israel came with good intentions. Israel came with the intention to live alongside the Palestinians. And let me say, the way, you know, when my great-grandfather came from Russia, you know what he said? He had it very right, and he had the Bible as his guide. He said, the rights of the land are ours because this is our land. This is why I came back, because this is our ancestral homeland. People who live okay, on the Dr. land Dr. have Dr. rights. Dr. Gesson, I and we try Dr. to Gesson, live with those people. We're going, they we're, refuse Dr. Gesson, to accept Gesson, please, us. we're going to the break. Norman, would you like to have a quick word before we go to the break? Yes, I wonder, Dr. Gisson, if I came with a Bible in hand to your home, I knocked on your door, and I said, according to my Bible, my family lived where your home, where your home is. My family lived there 2,000 years ago. Would you pack up your bags and leave? All right, gentlemen, that, that's a very interesting point. Gentlemen, we're going to go I'm to a break. Your, and when I'm we return, we will continue our discussion on the Middle East and many other issues. Stay with our team. I asked myself why I left the house. I couldn't go home. It's a miracle that she's still alive. Because all other Serbs and our municipality who dare to stay are all kidnapped and missing or dead. I sometimes risk it and go on the street. My wife knows that if I don't come back, I'm dead. Do you know who lives here? Sad. 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 shoot a 10 year old boy over there we train them how to kill we as officers develop the orders for them to kill, kill! kill! but we never explain to them why it's okay kill! most people at the point of looking down in time to pull the trigger became conscientious objectors i don't remember squeezing the trigger and i, re I don't remember uh, seeing him go down all i remember is that we shot at him People on the other side are soldiers too, and soldiers do what soldiers do, and they're trying to kill us, we're trying to kill them, and that's just uh, the ugly face of war. See that enemy dressed in black! See that enemy dressed in black! nothing honorable in killing. I went to the war zone and I started seeing how I need to change. And the only way to do that is to not pick up a rifle and kill another person. That's why I'm applying for conscience objector. Welcome back to Crosstalk. I'm Peter Lavelle. To remind you, we're discussing Normal Finkelstein's criticism of Israel. Before, let's see who Russians tend to blame for Middle East tensions. Russia's official position on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is quite clear. It wants to play a role in a just peace. This week, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visited Moscow, holding meetings with President Dmitry Medvedev and Prime Minister Vladimir Putin, respectively. The parties discussed how Russia could facilitate deeper diplomatic ties between Israel and the Palestinians. The Levada Center survey reveals public opinion largely corresponds with Russia's inclusive approach to resolving the Middle East conflict. 
When asked who was responsible for instability in the Middle East, 26% of respondents said it was the United States. 12% said Israel was at fault. And 10% blamed Islamic fundamentalists. The survey also asked Russians which side they support in the conflict. Preferences here were more divided. 10% seconded the Israelis, 12% the Palestinians. Half of the respondents said they did not support any side of the conflict. Russia, along with the U.S., EU, and the United Nations, is a member of the Middle East Quartet and energetically pursues peace in the Middle East. Back to you, Peter. Thank you for that. Before we went to the break here, Dr. Gesson, Norman Megan brought up the point of uh, coming to your door with a gun and a Bible. I mean... This is how the Palestinians see it as well. I mean, Norman, as far as I can tell, is on the record of believing in the state of Israel has a right to exist. I mean, it's not like Israel should be wiped off the map, okay? Israel does have Israel, rights. No, I'm sorry, I, maybe I'm wrong, Norman, go I ahead. Don't think Israel, go ahead, Norman. I don't think Israel or any other state has a right to exist. I don't think Israel or any other state, for that matter, has a right to exist. They do exist, and under international law, mm -hmm. They have very specific rights and duties as a member state of the United Nations. And, beyond, and as far as I can tell, all of the Arab states, in fact the entire United Nations, has been willing to grant Israel its rights and duties under international law. The problem is, as anyone can tell from the record, the UN record, the record of the International Court of Justice, is that Israel refuses to recognize the rights of the Palestinians to their state and their right to self-determination, their right to their homeland. That's, not true. That's the obstacle. The obstacle is it's not, not recognition of Israel. Okay, Dr. Gessen in Tel Aviv, go right ahead, reply. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you can explain why it's not true. I want to say that. I, yeah, I will tell you why. I think that you're engaging in the most. Uh, it's a dangerous exercise from the point of view of what you know. We are talking. It's very popular to talk about uh, Holocaust deniers, but. Those who deny history, those who are not willing to accept history, are committing a worse crime. Because I can accept post-historians like you. I can accept that. But denying historical facts, known historical facts, the pogroms were launched against Jews here, not against the well, Arabs. Give an the Jews were those who tried to make give an, peace with the Arabs give an when they come here. 1929, 1936, the first time. The get... reason that we came with a rifle and a Bible is because it wasn't safe to come with a Bible alone. And when we came only with our books, our books were burned in other places in the world as well. And this was the only place in the world that my great-grandfather believed he should go back. And he lived a very good life in the Dnieper Petrovsk, but he believed he should come back to his own homeland. And this is the homeland of the Jewish people. Otherwise, how can you explain that one million Russian immigrants decided to immigrate to Israel, not to other countries? And life is not easy here. I told you, it's not a normal state, not because we chose it, but because the abnormality was imposed on us. We have to surf on these tsunami waves. And you think the whole world is a bubble in international law. You, see, you mentioned international law. I'll tell you what's in the UN Charter. Article 51, the uncontested and uh, right of self-defense. That's Article 51. Israel's the only country that is brought to court for exercising that right. Without that article, states would not exist, whether you recognize no. them or you don't okay. recognize them. All right, them. let's go back the to the hallmark of the, let's, of let's the UN back. Charter was Article 51. Let's go back to New York. Go no. ahead. Norman, go ahead. There's a lot said there. Go ahead. Uh, Dr. Gisson, I think you're rather confused on why Israel is being taken or should be taken to the International Criminal Court. In, Dr. in Richard Goldstone's report on what happened in Gaza, he doesn't even address the issue of whether Israel has the right to self-defense, and he never denies Israel's right to self-defense. The reason Israel is now being or should be taken before the International Criminal Court is because Israel systematically targeted civilians and civilian population during the massacre no. in Gaza. No. <laughs> and the Israeli officials, no. Israeli it officials wasn't a massacre were pretty and we didn't straightforward target about civilians. I'm that. Sorry. I'm for sorry. example, Dr. Gessen, Dr. Gessen, Dr. Gessen, Dr. Okay. Gessen, you had your chance to speak. Please let Norman finish his point. Please, to be fair. Go ahead, Norman. Uh, the Israeli officials were pretty straightforward about what they were doing in Gaza. So, for example, as the massacre was winding down, 
Foreign Minister Tsipi Livni, she boasted that we show the Arabs that we went wild in Gaza. The day after or two day the day or two days after the Gaza massacre ended, <clears throat> excuse me, on January nineteenth, Sippy Livni went on Channel Ten News in Israel and she boasted that we carried on like real hooligans in Gaza and that's what I demanded, or so she you said. Sound like, you uh, sound the evidence is like, quite overwhelming. Like and Hamas it's a, website. <laughs> it, it, the evidence is quite overwhelming. Uh, well, I'm sorry, but the Hamas website, were, if they no had evidence. that quote, the quote comes from your Channel 10 News. It's from Foreign Minister Livni. Livni. No. Are you denying that she made those statements? No. Are you denying that yes, Foreign I, Minister Livni I, said I, I we went wild made, in Gaza? You, you have, are you denying you have a, that Foreign? Are you denying no, that you Foreign? Are you denying that Foreign Minister Livni context, said that we conducted context. ourselves with? I don't know oh, what I think she those, said. No. Those, no. those statements are very much said. in context. What, in what do you think and real hooliganism not, means? Not at the slanderous yeah, okay, so lies let's see, of Goldstone let's see what report. The Goldstone report was a one-sided slanderous report. Gentlemen, gentlemen, you're, let, you're see, talking okay. over each other. Dr. Gesson, so what Norman Hinkelstein is saying okay, is not... No, let me, mm -hmm. let me jump in here. What Norman just said is not true. Is that what you're saying? It is not true. It is not factually true. Yes. Not true, not true, because you know what, what, the, what the, the primordial sin of the Goldstone report lies in the Eldura case. You're of changing, Dr. Gesson, you're, that you're changing the topic event. again. You're no, changing. I'm not changing. Yes, you're I'm not changing. changing the topic. I'm not changing. Norman this, no, Finkelstein not changing. made this, this is statement. Where it he made we the failed. statement. Please, no. sir, please, we sir. sir. Yeah, We're changing the subject. You're changing the subject. Norman Finkelstein said that on Israeli television, the foreign ministers made these claims. You're saying that's not true. I don't know. I didn't hear what she said. I know it's the facts because I was part of the investigation after um, the fact. It's very and easy one to thing, check. one thing that came out Any from this report after we investigated everything Google. is that this was this was a crime mm. scene in which Hamas tampered with the evidence in order to prove that we are criminals. And we failed. We failed here on the battle, not not the, yeah, not because we what, conducted a massacre, let, but we see. failed to expose mm -hmm. who the real villains are. Okay, Norman, go ahead. Let's see what your investigation showed, because I read them very carefully. 1,400 people were killed in Gaza. Of those 1,400, up to four-fifths were civilians. About 6,000 homes were completely destroyed in Gaza. About 80% of the agricultural crops were destroyed in Gaza. The only flour mill in Gaza was destroyed. A chicken farm was destroyed. Israel went in with its tanks, ran over the chickens, okay. killed about 50,000 chickens. Nonsense. So Israel had its investigations. Yeah. And what, and what did it find in its investigations? No, no, no. The, the, it found no, that exactly, this is lies. You are one, exactly lies. one Israeli, exactly one is, exactly one Israeli soldier, one Israeli soldier had committed a crime in Gaza. He stole a credit card and rang up a bill on the credit card of $400. That was the only crime that your government could discover after what happened in Gaza. Now I wonder, Mr. Gisson, do you right, really it wasn't believe a crime. Was it, that in the it wake was of a, all of a that death, of self defense do you really the, believe that in the wake of all of that do you really believe that in the wake of all of that death what? What? all of that destruction, what Amnesty International called the twenty two days of death and destruction, what the Goldstone Report called an attack designed to punish, humiliate, and terrorize the Palestinian people. Do you really believe that after those what 22 days and in the midst of all years, that death right? and destruction, Norman, you made it. Do you really believe the only crime that was committed was one credit card stolen? Okay. Dr. Gesson, you reply to that. So yes, only, yes, only one crime, only one crime was committed. I can look straight. 
I can look straight into the camera and straight into your eyes and you say, the worst thing is the fact that you are denying historical facts. You have made up your mind and I'm confusing you with the facts. You're not ready to deal with the real facts. This was stage. The staging of events happened when Hamas understood that in order to stop the thing, they have to use human beings as human shield. That's a crime against humanity. Every place, they protected themselves with human shields. And we try to avoid as much as possible right. collateral damage gentlemen, and getting uninvolved. Gentlemen, we're and, running and out of time. Gentlemen, this is a war that you can hear, Colonel. All right, gentlemen, we're almost what, uh, we're almost out of time. Expert from Afghanistan, uh, say about this war. All right, gentlemen, we didn't cover as much as I had hoped. Many thanks to our guests today, Normal Finkelstein and Renan Gessen, and thanks to our viewers for watching us here in RT. See you next time, and remember, crosstalk rules.